the only thing that you did wrong was you accepted a job that we probably never should have offered you. That was, that was kind of the, um, and that was our, that was our mistake just in the sense that we sort of set you up to fail. Uh, it, it completely inadvertently. I mean, that certainly wasn't the plan going in. Welcome to the Next Level Journalist, where you will hear from some of the best journalists in the business or who have been there, done that, and willing to share with you what they've learned so you can get better, faster. Today's guest is the sports director at WPSD TV. He's been in the business for more than two decades. He and I actually crossed paths when I first got into the business in 2006 as the sports producer slash reporter at WPSD. So Mr. Jeff Bidwell, Thank you for joining me here today, sharing your time, sharing your knowledge and experience with anyone who sees this. Happy to do it, Kyle. It's been, uh, it's been a long time since we've been even semi-face to face, so good to see you. You as well. Well, Jeff, the first thing I want to talk about is when people ask me about my journey, and I obviously tell them I was let go from my first job, and I tell them, you know, I didn't break any station rules, I didn't break the law or anything like that. You know, it just wasn't my time. You know, I can't put it any other way than that. That's the business. You know, it's a tough business. And that's how things ended for me. So, you know this better than anyone. Can you <laughs> confirm or deny that for anyone that says, Kyle, you had to have done something wrong? Uh, the only thing that you did wrong was you accepted a job that we probably never should have offered you. That was that was kind of the, um, and that was our that was our mistake. Just in the sense that we sort of set you up to fail, uh, it, it completely inadvertently. I mean, that certainly wasn't the plan going in. Uh, you know, at the time, you know, almost 15 years ago now, we were in a position where we were we were trying to. I guess the best way to put when I came to Paducah in 2002. I was 27 years old and I was one of the youngest people in the building. And this was a place that people had started. They had spent their whole careers there. They eventually retired. And to fast forward to today, it's now, if I walked in the door at 27, I'm one of the oldest people in the building. It's just, it, the, it is, it's, it's gone from a place that was a second or a third job for people to now it's a first job. So if we hire Kyle Scott in 2020, you're in a much better uh, nurturing environment, I guess, rather than an environment 15 years ago where we needed you to be able to hit the ground and go. And you just weren't, you just weren't there. Um, you know, we, we were hoping to, uh, you know, sort of be able to nurture you along, but it's kind of one of those things of, you know, you got to crawl before you walk, walk before you run, and we're running. And you were crawling, and it just reached a point, you know, and – and I'll gladly throw somebody else under the bus for this, that, you know, I was trying to get, I was trying to get managerial help for you. That it's like, look, I'm, I'm out of ideas on how we can kind of speed him up a little bit. And management just decided that that was too much trouble, apparently. So that was why the, the decision was ultimately made. But you did, you did, you did nothing wrong at all. Um, we just, it was just a bad, it was just a bad fit. And, and that was one of the things we talked about it since that that was, that's one of the best things uh, that my regret in the situation is diminished only that you found a better fit. And then you were able to, it was like step back. And then you were able to take, you know, 10 steps forward after that. And that we didn't, we didn't break you, you <laughs> break your confidence and, and do all that. So um, I'm glad everything, everything worked out for, the way it was supposed to work out. I appreciate, like I said, how you shared that. And you shared that with me before. You shared it in the testimony that you gave me for, you know, when I first launched uh, the, uh, the course that I was, uh, you know, sharing with people. So they realized and they get an understanding that, look, you've got to be as prepared as possible because I wasn't that prepared. I wasn't as prepared as I thought. And in hindsight, obviously, I had no business, like you said, being in a mid-market, uh, you know, at that time, you know, at 22 years old, and you guys did nurture me. You know, I learned an immense amount from you, from Greg Miller, who was the weekend sports anchor at the time, from everyone in the newsroom, producers, directors, you know, I was picking up 
everything for the first time. And just like you said back then, that wasn't acceptable. You that's a market that you come in knowing all these things. So uh, and there's there's certain college experiences that you have that can sort of fast track you a little bit. And you know, there are there are countless colleges that have, you know, daily television news programs. And and while eight people may watch them, it gives you those reps of okay, this is on some basic level what a newsroom is like. Yep. And if I if memory serves correctly, Northern Kentucky didn't really you guys had a communications program, but it what well, you're not doing you were sort of learning the nuts and bolts of here's how you shoot and hey, here's how you kind of be on camera. But there was no there was no day to day right. newsroom operation there. So so you know it's not a it's not an impossibility for kids to come out of college and excel maybe at step two if they, you know, they jump the line a little bit, mm -hmm. but in your case and, and kids that go through other programs like that, you have to, you, you've got to, you've got to go to a much smaller place uh, and sort of get those and get those reps in an environment that, you know, expects that sort of novice coming in the door that it's like, okay, this is, this is our lump of clay. We're going to mold it. And, you know, and unfortunately, like I said, when you, when you came in to us, we needed that clay, you know, already molded. Right, no doubt. And like I said, when, uh, you know, I look at NKU now, and it's grown significantly. They actually do do things on a daily basis, like a newscast and stuff like that. So, you know, what I've learned that there are so many schools out there still trying to figure that out and get kids, if you will, prepared for getting into the business. But, you know, I say all that, that, you know, the 15 months that I was there, I learned so much from you guys. And when I went on to my second job, which should have been my first job, you know, I, you know, was teaching people things, you know, and it was all because of what you guys, uh, you know, did for me. So while, you know, you say that you probably did me a, a disservice by offering it, you know, it was tough, but it prepared me and just launched me going forward. So I thank you for, you know, maybe making the wrong decision and hiring me. <laughs> well, and it's, you know, it's, it's, there is nothing that is more um, from my experience, there is nothing more stressful than trying to get that first job mm -hmm. because you're, you know, you, you're, you, you come firing out of the cannon. I'm done with school. Let's go find a job. And, and I think there's, you know, for, for a, for a, for a career that has, there's an, in, there is a very finite number of jobs. And so it's like, you're all fighting, you know, every school in the country is pumping kids out. And now you're trying to, you know, fill whatever available spot may be out there. And I, the biggest lesson, and it is the, it is, it's not necessarily one that I followed, uh, but it's okay to turn a job down. You know, it's okay. Um, you know, if you go to a place and you visit, it's okay to go for whatever reason it may be, this, this is not a fit for me. Mm -hmm. And, and if it's not a fit, if they got you to the point where they want to, and, and if a station brings you in, they are, they, they want to hire you. The, at that point, the only thing, the only reason you're not going to get hired is if you screw it up. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if they bring you in, you're good enough to get a job, which means you're good enough to get another job other than that place. So it's okay to have some sort of self-reflection and be like, this is, this, this isn't going to, this isn't fit for me and I'll find another one. But when it's the first one, it's hard to walk away and, and leave, you know, money as, as little money as it usually is there uh, on the table. Well, let's do some uh, self-reflecting. Enough about uh, me and you. Let's flip this around on you. That's right. you being here. So let's reflect uh, on you and your experience that you know, take us back to when you knew you wanted to, you know, get into this uh, industry and your time in Ohio and then, you know, up to, up to date. So I was, I guess, kind of a late bloomer. And it's, you know, at this point, I'm so old that, you know, in, in when I my senior year of high school, um, I decided to join the newspaper. And we didn't have TV or anything like that. But um, I don't know why I don't know why I did you could do newspaper junior and senior year, and I only did it senior year for whatever reason. And I loved it. I just I loved all of it. We had a our, our uh, varsity football coach got fired and I'm like, I'm, I'm diving in 
you know, I'm doing interviews with the superintendent and the principal and the athletic director and the school board. And they're like, who is this kid? And why am I being asked questions about this? And I just, I, I, it was the whole part of it was just intoxicating on top of, um, I got to go to game, you know, it's like, you to go to, at its core, it's like, I get to go watch sports and while I'm not being paid, I'm getting in for free. So that's cool too. And, um, and then it was time to choose a college and I, you know, Ohio university was a great, uh, uh, journalism school and, you know, they had different paths that you could go into and whether it was newspaper or, you know, radio or television or PR or whatever it may have been. And, and, you know, at that point in the early nineties, which, Kids will, and I, ha and I know they won't get this because I was back at OU uh, last year and I sat down with all their sports guys and it was just blank faces that in the early 90s, Sports Center was like the biggest thing in the world. Like if you were a sports person, it was the greatest thing ever. And you know, it was the days of, of Dan Patrick and Keith Olbermann and, and SportsCenter was 30 minutes long and they would basically replay it on a loop for six or eight hours every morning because they just didn't, they didn't have all the yelling at each other shows like they do now to fill the time. And it was like, it was funny. It was, and it was just like, you'd watch it over and over and you'd remember the jokes and you'd tell the jokes to your friends that Patrick made or whatever. And I was like, I want to do that. Like that is, that is awesome. And so I got into that's that's the path I'm going to go to went to OU did wasn't a great student I was I was a very smart high school student that relied on um, God-given ability and didn't study ever and then I went to college and realized that was a gigantic problem so yeah. the first couple of years were a challenge and then once I got into the TV stuff it was just it was off and rolling and uh, it was it was great and then so from there you know, I, I, I spent six months, I graduated on a Saturday. On Monday, I was on a plane to Junction City, Kansas, which is about 10 miles from Manhattan at uh, where Kansas State is. And I was, I was interviewing for their weekend job, which was actually not a weekend job because they only had Monday through Friday. It was a Fox station. So I was going to anchor like Thursdays. That was the weekends in their mind. And they were going to pay me $13,000. And I thought that was the greatest thing ever. Um, Cause I had no idea how much $13,000 a year was. And one thing led to another. And I was, you know, I was, I was number two of two and didn't get it. And, and that was fine. And then three months later, I went to Rome, Georgia, about 45 miles North of Atlanta. It was a cable station. Uh, same deal. It was going to pay about 15, two guys. I was number two again. So uh, it got to be November. It had been about six months and I was just sitting around. Um, I, I had gone back to OU several times and worked at their TV station just to kind of keep during holidays and stuff to get more reps. They let me come back and, and do that. But uh, eventually I called my advisor and at OU and was just frustrated because just couldn't, couldn't get anything. And he said, he's like, I'll get you on the phone with a consultant and consultant talked to me. He said, if you want a news job, he's like, I can have you a news job in five minutes. And I didn't want a news job. I wanted a sports job. And, but he just suggested that was just get in the door, get in the door and then let the cards kind of fall once you get there. So the day after Thanksgiving, loaded up the car and went to Augusta, Georgia, uh, which was market 120. Cause at the time, Again, you, in, you know, 200 television markets, you anticipated I'm getting a job in market 170, 180, 190, making 13,000. Like that was just, it's a starving artist business to where you start and pay your dues. Well, I went to Augusta, which was market 110. So I was like, awesome. You know, that, and now I'm producing the news and I'm making 19,000, which I was like, well, that's way more than I was going to make before. So this is great. And, and then after two paychecks, I realized how very little money that, that actually was, but when I got there, the sports director was an OU grad and the weekend guy was from Toledo, which is where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And he was a, um, I had worked with him. I had interned at the other station in town while he worked in Toledo. So it was just, it was like this happy accident falling out of the sky. 
And they literally, after two days, are like, you want to do sports? I was like, yeah, well, that eventually, yeah. They're like, you're our number three. And so I produced Monday through Friday. And then when somebody was on vacation, I would then anchor on the weekends and do, and it was just two years later, number two guys leaves. I move into the number two spot, do that for two years. And then I uh, wanted to get closer to home and did that a little bit and came to Paducah and 18 years later, we're still, uh, we're still here. So that's the short story long of, of the path. That's great. I love hearing about how people's experiences, just how it unfolds. I mean, we each have such a unique journey, uh, you know, in life in general, but especially in the news industry, TV industry. Um, so as a sports director today, talk about um, the different hats that you have to wear on a daily basis, just so people get an idea that, hey, you don't just show up and read the teleprompter. There's a couple of things, to say the least, that happen in between then. There, there are no hats that don't get worn because, um, you know, at this point it is, you know, the business has, you know, in my time and it, it has contracted greatly. So, you know, my predecessors, they were, they came in and, you know, they would type out everything that they said, but they'd never pick up a camera. You know, they would, you know, they had people to shoot stuff. If they had to go do an interview, someone would go shoot it. They would just sit there and hold the microphone and that was it. Mm -hmm. And that has, that has just, all of that has changed. So I, and the thing is, I, I got in right at the tail end of that. So I don't know any different. So it's not, there's no real, Oh, I remember back when I didn't know I've had to do everything. And that was really the best piece of advice um, that I was given very early was just be a Swiss army knife because uh, the more you do, the more value you have. And, you know, I mean, I go in, I, you know, every and that's the thing now that we're down to two people in our department, even from, you know, before the pandemic when we had three. So, you know, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I'm by myself. So if there's a game that needs to be shot, I'm going to get it. If there's interviews that have to be gotten. I'm going to get it. You know, I edit all the video. I type everything in I'm going to say. Then I, you know, obviously do the news and, and I have to do uh, the website and get all that updated and get social media updated and, and, and stay on top of that. So um, it's a, I, I think one of the, the sort of low key, most draining parts of the job in a way is that is Twitter in that you're never really off. Um, because I mean, you just, you, and, and part of it, it, it's like a, I mean, it's, it's an addiction in a way, but it's almost just a professional addiction of, I can't let 15 minutes go without going back just to check, you know, has anything happened that, that I need to know about? And, you know, and, and it's like, and that happens, you know, where suddenly the world caves in and you're just like, I, I literally just went to the bathroom. And so, so it's like, uh, you know, on the weekends or even in the morning, like the, the work day is not one thirty to 10 30. It's, you know, it's a lot of it's 24 seven and you, you have to, you have to work very hard to try to turn it off. And, you know, and that's why I have, um, I have a good team, you know, Adam's been with me now for eight years and, and, you know, between the two of us, somebody's got their eyes on what's going on. So it's like, we don't have to, I don't, I think when I was younger, I was a lot more, I've got this and I have to worry about this. And I've, I've, as I've gotten older, I've let go a little bit more, which has made it, made it, I think my life a lot easier and it's important for them to be able to be able to do those things and then sort of learn because you know as, as the analogy i always use is you know when i get hit by a bus you got to step in and nothing can nothing can drop off we got to keep going so trying to just you know get them sort of trained on the job for one day <laughs> one day whenever i walk out of here uh, they'll be able to take over so you you just touched on that you know with uh, this pandemic the the station you know you guys had to, you know cut back from three to two and just how you know popular that is and you know sports departments across the board even before COVID nineteen you know just you know when I remember when I interned at at a station in Cincinnati there were five people in the, in that department now there's two right. so talk about you know just how you know, how condensed it is and, you know, maybe why it is condensed given the season. Because you guys did have three people and it, Paducah is a huge market. I don't know if people realize that, but you guys cover a ton of ground. Yeah, it is. Uh, once upon a time I heard this and I don't know if it still holds up or not, but it, it's, 
it's one of, if not the largest geographic television market in the country. I mean, it's like we basically were kind of right in the middle, but I mean, technically it goes about an hour and a half in every direction. Yeah. And so uh, that has made it, um, that makes it challenging, but it's a different, um, it's different now just in the sense that every game is on television, you know, cause even when, you know, when you were here with us that, you know, the example Southern Illinois, uh, the Saluki basketball program, well, they went through a time from about, I guess, 2002 to 2007, where they made the NCAA tournament every year. They made the sweet 16 twice. Like they were, they were a legitimate national mid-major power. Mm -hmm. If we were not in the building, we were not going to have video of the game, mm -hmm. period. There was no ESPN3. There was no, um, you know, YouTube feed, live streams and this, that. There just, there wasn't. So that really put a stress on us trying to just have to be everywhere on top of the fact, oh, by the way, it's a three-hour round trip in my day driving up and back and, and whatever. So it has, from that standpoint now, um, it's easier. Uh, it's, it's sort of, look, I love to have three people. Uh, it, it is a stress uh, on, the, on the sort of infrastructure of the department when there's just one person in the office all the time. Because um, again, if, you know, Murray State's our main school. If something happens at Murray and I need to run down there, well, it's 50 minutes in the car. So again, you know, it's like, so you're looking at almost two hours of my day just literally driving. And it's, I can't even sit in the passenger seat and work. I have to drive. So those types of things uh, are hard, but at the same time, every game's on television now. So, and I think people's, I think people's expectations of you being at places has sort of lessened uh, over the years. So, and I, and that may have never really been a big deal. That might've just been us sort of projecting that, but um, it, it's harder. I mean, it's harder, you know, the hard part, I, you nailed it, is just the travel. You know, it's like, I'm already looking ahead, you know, three weeks from now when we have the state golf tournament, well, it's in Bowling Green. Well, that's two and a half hours away. Well, you know, during the week, you know, Adam can go one day, but, you know, the boys' final round's on a Saturday. So he can't go. So if we have to go, I've got to come in on a, you know, on a Saturday and work an extra day. And then so that means I got to take a day off the next week. We just get into this cycle of if we just had a third person to slide in there, you don't have those problems. But, you know, in these unprecedented times, that's just not a, uh, it, it's just not, a realistic option and so I don't worry about it we just we go with two and we do the best we can how about when uh let's switch this up a little bit how about when you although it's been a while um go to hire somebody you know what do you look for in a qualified candidate if you go back to eight years when you considered Adam or maybe that part-time position that third person what did you or what do you look for in someone who's qualified and that you want to join your sports department it's changed a lot. You know, it's changed a lot. I mean, from the, from the early days of, you know, when we hired you and, and like the first thing was, okay, has this person worked somewhere else before? And um, that has obviously changed over the years that the, you know, the last, I don't know, last, well, the last several have been, you know, first timers. And you just, I think there's a, um, you know, it's, 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 Times have changed now. It's not the old days of, you know, sending VHS tapes and popping them in the VCR. And, you know, as we were always told that, you know, you have 10 seconds to grab their attention because otherwise it's coming out and they're moving on and you need to front load with your best stuff. You know, now it's YouTube links and, and stuff. So there might be a little more, you might get a little more time, but I think there's just a general sense of it's, it's the non-describable. It's just kind of the it, you know, do, do you, do you have that, do you have that presence? Are you comfortable? Do you, um, which generally just lends, lends to, I've done this for a little bit at least. Um, you know, I, I couldn't even, I thought I was sort of ahead of the curve in school. I would be terrified to go back and look at anything that I did back then, just how um, not good I was. Uh, but, but that's it. There's just, there's sort of that, there's that it thing. I think the one thing that 
I learned, so we, I, I basically went on a recruiting trip back to OU um, twice in the last couple of years looking to hire somebody. Okay. And I went and talked to their, sat down with their TV sports department. And, you know, we went, here's what I'm looking for. You know, seniors, if you're, you know, come on down. And the thing that I sort of took from that was, when kids go to journalism college now and get a journalism degree, the end game is not necessarily to work for a local television station. So when I, back in the old days, like that was it. Like that's why you got the, you went to school so you could go work at a TV station or you went to do newspaper so you could work at a newspaper. That was, that was the only path. Now kids seem to be going to learn how to be content creators and they know how to shoot and they know how to do on camera and they know how to do podcasts and they know how to do a b c and d but going to work at a television station is not necessarily what they want to do so my advice to them was if you don't have to work at a television station awesome if you can be a content creator and can monetize that and can go make a good living being your own boss doing whatever it is you want to go do awesome the problem is the television station has a built-in audience and that's where, you know, you get paid. So that's, that's kind of the, um, that, that's sort of the fork in the road that I think these, these kids have to sort of decide. And what's happened now in this, in this ESPN three and watch ESPN era and whatever. And so all these colleges are doing their own like in-house broadcasts for ESPN three. Mm -hmm. And but, but what's happening is these kids are, they're doing sideline reporting. Um, they might do some, might do some play by play, you know, they learn how to work the cameras and so on. Those are all awesome skills. Those do not translate to, I want to work at a television news station and, you know, kids standing on the sideline at a game, just talking about what they've seen or, um, you know, the, the big ones are our internships where, you know, I interned at a big city and here I'm doing a bunch of standups, uh, you know, outside a basketball arena or in a basketball arena or at a football stadium, like at pro stadiums, like I'm going to be impressed because you were an intern, you know, in Cincinnati and you got to go to Paul Brown stadium and stand on the sideline and hold a microphone like that. That doesn't translate to the skill set we need. You know, we need, Bottom line is I need somebody that can handle a camera and I need somebody that's a storyteller. Those are the two most important things. And those things a lot of times go hand in hand. But if you can tell stories, if you can tell stories, you are able to jump to the front of the line with, with everything else. Doesn't matter, how, doesn't matter how pretty the buildings you are, you're standing in front of just talking about. You need to be able to tell stories. And that, that is the biggest sort of uh, job hack that I can give uh, to be able to, to, like I said, just get to the front of the line. Share with us, if you will, your process when you're going to a story, everything from, you know, what, what goes into the planning, you know, the pre-production to the delivery of it. What is, what's going through your mind? What's your process when you approach a story? I, mean, I think when you go into it, you have a general idea what you're, what you want to do. Um, you know, I think the, the, the thing that has sort of changed in the 20 years, almost 25 now that I've been doing this, is that sports aren't important. Games aren't important. It's, it's the people. And so when you start talking about, you know, if you go out and you try to do a story about, well, you know, the run defense, blah, blah, blah. You're just, it's just going over the majority of your, your viewers heads. Um, I think you, to know your audience, you know, we have a, you know, basically your, your market research says that television news watchers are, um, you know, at least in our market are, you know, 40 to 45 year old um, moms. And so you're, you just have to kind of put everything through the prism of I'm talking to a mom right now. And she doesn't care about run defenses and she doesn't care about, uh, you know, a lot of just the, the runs, hits and errors of it. But if you can tell her a people story, she'll stop and pay attention. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest, 
uh, even when you have that people story, um, the most important thing that I can, uh, that I can uh, piece of advice to offer is just to listen uh, and, and be flexible in what you're doing. Um, you know, an example, and this is from, this is from back in my Augusta days that there was a baseball team, high school baseball team that was in the state semifinals and went to do a story about them being in the state semifinals. And about the third interview, I had, I just kind of, the kids had just sort of thrown out on their own about how they were playing for this, this manager that they had on the team that had died and they hadn't been that forthright about it. They just sort of threw the kid out. And then I finally was like, okay, I've heard that, like what's going on here. And then, so suddenly the story that went from, Hey, I'm, I'm just talking about a team playing in the state semifinals to, Hey, here's a team that had their, you know, their manager had battled leukemia for four, like the student manager had battled leukemia for four years and had passed away a couple months ago and they've dedicated the season to him. Well, it's like, now you've got an entirely different situation going on. Mm -hmm. But if I just hadn't been listening or just been sort of stubborn and, well, this is what I'm doing a story on and that's, that's it, then I miss it. And so that's the, just be curious, you know, get, get to, um, you know, get to know the people that you cover. It's a very hard, especially when you're young, um, it's a very hard um, line to not cross of be friendly, don't be friends. Mm -hmm. uh, because when, when the poop hits the fan, you can't be friends and mm -hmm. you have to do your job. And, you know, we went, you know, we, we have had instances here of that, of, you know, people that I have gone you know, when they have left, you know, that I have maintained a relationship and, and sometimes built friendships with. Uh, but when you're sort of in that moment, you kind of have to keep the professional distance on it. Um, but at the same time, you want to have a relationship. You know, it's good if they know your name and they may just, you know, throw in side conversations where the camera's never running, but they'll just talk to you and, and you're like, oh, I've got a story here. You know, something that I wouldn't have known otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a, it's a fine line and it takes, sometimes it takes a little while to, uh, to kind of draw it in the sand to figure out where it is. If you could go back and tell, you know, young Jeff Bidwell, as you're getting into this business, what would you tell him about, Hey, this is what you need to do, or this is what you should do. And this can happen. Um, if you could go back in time and pass along a little piece of advice. Dude, you don't know everything. You do not, you don't barely know anything. Um, you know, I was, I left college. I think when you're in college, there's a, there's a sense of, especially where, you know, at OU and, and whether it was, you know, Greg Miller's or, or other people that were peers, you know, it's like, okay, you look around the room and you sort of have a, a mental ranking system mm -hmm. and it's like, all right, I'm the third best person in here, you know, or, or I'm the best or whatever it may be. And sort of the mind problems is okay I'm third out of 15 in here well number eight just got a job and I can't and then you just start doubting yourself and what have you but but I left there feeling like I know how all this works and then I walked into a newsroom with people that were at 23 years old but with people that were 30 35 40 been doing this a long time and they would offer advice. Hey, maybe you could, you know, do this a little bit. And my initial, it was like very defensive, you know, like Dude, I got this, I know what I'm doing. So buzz off and eventually I came around, I was able to sort of see it from a different perspective. I was like, wow, I was just out of line one. And, you know, there, there are just so many, you just don't know what you don't know. And that's, and, and that's it. It's just listen to the people around you, ask for help, ask for, um, you know, just be a sponge. And, and especially now, like stuff that, and I tell, I tell people that interview with me, I tell people that come to work for me, you know, YouTube is one of the greatest 
uh, inventions ever. And that now, especially in a time where you are likely going to be hired to be a one man band um, somewhere or an MMJ or whatever we call them these days that, uh, that basically you can go to YouTube and you can type in one man band standups and you could spend a week just watching things that other people have done who have worked by themselves and been creative and had themselves stand apart and just borrow, steal, whatever. Like just take those ideas and let them bounce, you know, try them out. And if you don't like it, then, eh. and if you like it, use it, tweak it, you know, do whatever. But it's like, it's hard. There's no excuses now to be like, I, I don't know what to do. You know, it's like, there, there are so many, along with the people around you that are, you know, experienced that you, you should be able to sort of glean that knowledge off of. There are countless resources. And like I said, I, there's none better than YouTube, I think, to just, to just go in and Look, I go to YouTube every single year when, I, when I'm doing a high school football open and I go sit and watch, you know, 50 college videos and like, ah, I'm going to steal that element and steal that, you know, and then just kind of make a recipe of my own because mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not that smart anymore. So it's like, that's, a, uh, that's an easy way to do it. I want to respect your time. I know we've been on here for a good 45 minutes or so. Um, is there anything else before I let you go that you want to add or? You think, hey, I, I definitely need to mention this for you know an aspiring journalist or a journalist that's that's just trying to get better. And I guess just sort of speaking to the content creating group, you know, don't. It's cool to have side hustles. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard because you've got a boss. You know, depending on your place of business, they they may want to monitor it or have a piece of it or, or whatever, but, mm -hmm. you know, try to diversify yourself a little bit. And especially in this, this, this business now, the way it has gone, you know, I'm a dinosaur. I'm 45 years old. Um, you know, if there's, I would just realistically have a, I do not like, 20 years ago, I worked at a station that had one computer in the building with internet. One. And it was in the sales department. Like you had to go upstairs and down the hall. The world has just flipped over in 20 years. Yeah. I can't even imagine what it's going to be in 10 more down the road, especially when it comes to this, to this business. Mm -hmm. I'm not pushing anybody out the door, but I think just from a, my experience of, when I sit and think, is there something else I'd want to do? It always kind of comes back to, I don't know what I can do. I don't know what I'm qualified to do. I'm sure I'm qualified for a hundred things, but it's like, this is what I've done for my whole life. I would just encourage the, the, the new people in the business have an exit strategy, like mid thirties, you know, once you get to meet your mid thirties and maybe you're like, you know what? I love it. And I want to stay in it forever. Awesome. Mm -hmm it also may just reach a point where you don't really have a choice. You know, it's like, cause again, the business is getting younger and younger and they just keep bringing in, frankly, younger and, and less expensive people. Yep. And because, because the business model, the finances has just, it's evolved so much that, you know, you don't want to get stuck. And so just sort of keep options open for what you want to do. And, and that's the best thing. This is not, I just can't imagine somebody that gets in this job today that in, in 2060, they're going to be retiring in this job. I just don't think that it's not built that way anymore. And that's kind of where the exit strategy comes in that it's not, it's not meant for, it's not meant to, it's not, it's not meant to retire. In it. Mm -hmm. you know, I may be one of the, the last, if, if I stick in it that long that, you know, I may be one of the last in the breed, but um, that would probably be, nine pieces of advice shoved into one, but that, that would be what I would offer. Hey, I appreciate everything. I mean, that, like I said, I'm getting different answers from everyone and, and that's, you know, I appreciate the transparency and I, and I hope that people that watch this pick that up as well. Um, because that's the goal of this to give them, you know, a peek behind the curtain, what it's really like, as opposed to what you read about in textbooks and stuff like that. So uh, to get someone's perspective, who's been there, done that and still doing that. Um, it's invaluable. So Jeff, I appreciate you. And, and again, your time and more no, no. just your experiences that you've shared and the knowledge that you've shared with us today. Anytime. Happy to do it. And thank you 
for checking out this channel. If you found this content beneficial, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and share it with someone you think might find it beneficial as well because this channel was simply started and created to serve you, to help others grow, to learn how other successful TV journalists do or did it. So take what serves you so you can get better faster and reach your next level.